Great. It gives me great pleasure to have the returning Gary Elphick, uh, the boss, the big man. Actually, Gary, last time we spoke uh, on this podcast, it was April. It was the uh, the week after Faversham. Uh, yeah. It was on the round table. Uh, the fans, we were all in uh, absolute euphoria. As usual with yourself, your eyes were very much already, I felt, were already on this season uh, that we're in now. And yeah. So you, you you obviously had some the signings in mind that you got in, um, Gary. Yeah. And I mean, first of all, like you, you got Bailey Atkirst in, who looked really good. I mean, it was just such a shame that he got injured in that first game. I mean, what, what's what's the situation with him? Is he is he now gone? Is he is there an option uh, for him to come back, or what's the issue? The side so sign there? he he was on an original uh, a twenty eight day loan. Yeah. Um, and all that was going to be was basically to test the waters to see um, if we liked him, he liked us. Uh, we had fantastic uh, sort of references towards him from sort of Craig Stone who coached him mm. in the Jill's youth. And also I have quite a relationship with Neil Harris, their manager. He, he, he spoke to me on the phone about him and, and spoke very fondly. So uh, unfortunately, he's torn his MCL, uh, which looks like the very least a month. So mm. obviously that takes up to our end of our month loan deal with him. Um, and then I suppose, Chris, it will be about uh, strengthening the the actual injury itself and then getting back playing. So I suppose it's one of those where we may have to cross that bridge uh, right, when it does when it comes regards his physical state, the 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 current situation of how we will be doing at that certain time. So yeah, that'll be one to keep an eye on. But obviously, uh, yeah, bitterly disappointed uh, yeah, because. Jesus. Uh, we haven't got many left footers in the team. Uh, and, 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 you know, one thing I would say, Kane Penn has been fantastic. He he would have been... I had to have a long chat with him before uh, the first game of the season because he, he was outstanding at Ramsgate away in our last pre-season game. And I felt quite... Um, I, I felt like I was doing wrong by him as well by dropping him from the from the starting lineup. But we had this sorted out with Jinnam uh, about three or four weeks ago and we knew he was going to come. So I had to sort of, um, you know, upheld my end of the bar yeah. by, by, by bringing him in. And also, you know, he, he's a left foot. And at times we, we do need um, to, to have that left foot for just that penetration, just going down that side. But in Kane Penn, he's, he's been fantastic since he's come in. And, uh, you know, if it, if it did or didn't happen, then what what player we got in Kane Penn as well. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's one of them. Just you can never be, uh, say, things are 100% certain at a, at a certain time. And, We'll just see as the weeks progress what we need and what we don't yeah. need. Yeah, as one door closes, another opens. You know, like yeah. uh, he did. He did look excellent, and maybe it, well, it was very lucky that we only got him in on a on a twenty eight day loan then, because yeah, yeah. They, unfortunately, brutal honesty. You know, we don't need <laughs> yeah. someone on the books who's injured. So you know, yeah. there you go. But yeah. again, Kane's come in. It's been really good. I mean, I didn't catch uh, last Saturday's game uh, as I was working, yeah. but like the uh, Folkestone game, I thought, I thought he was, he was, he was superb just yeah. coming in and, but we, we'll get to that. Hang on. Right. Yeah. So yeah, so talking about other players. So we've got obviously Kai Brown's coming and you know, he's good. Yeah. Look, he's looked good in spells and he's already bagged a goal. I mean, what do you expect from the lad? What, what, what type of player is he? He's, he's someone for me that floats in between lines, uh, takes up sort of half spaces really well, comes in off the line. And, and can connect a team um, and I, I just think we we haven't yet seen the best of him I think he's still getting used to the way we try to play uh, the physicality of this league so I think he's he's a, he's a work in progress for sure um, and he's, he's just someone that's we, we're going to have to work with week in week out sort of get it into their muscle memory of how we play and hopefully uh, we'll reap the rewards later on in the season um, mm. and also what you would say on, on paper other than the Averley game, which that's that's the only game really where I've been bitterly disappointed with our performance. The other two games have been against probably the top two leagues, uh, top two teams within the league, um, mm. and we've we've had to go horses for courses, whereby we've had to try and make sure we we don't get breached easily and make sure we're we're up for the physical battle as well. So, it, you know, I, I've I've said this to the squad during games like my team always changes. I always try to to seek what the opponent's weaknesses and strengths are and yeah. try and combat it. And um, maybe sometimes I'll get it wrong and I can accept that. I'm a young manager. I'm going to learn through mistakes. Um, but I'll always put the the team first. And uh, 
I said that after the Hornchurch game, it, mm. it, it's a squad game. And I mean that, like, you look at Man United last night against Liverpool, the changes they're making. Mm. So hopefully I'm on to something that's right. I know, I know for certain we haven't clicked yet in certain situations, but um, I think the last two performances, I, you know, well, we'll, we'll get on to that later, but it's, um, yeah. it's been slightly gutting for me, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so we're talking about players that come in. So we've got Jill Gavario's come in. And uh, I mean, I only saw him in the Avery game. Is he, is he, has he been carrying a knock or is he just a little bit short of confidence? No, no I don't know whether it's a confidence thing. He, he, you know, I think he was slightly nervous in the first game with the crowd. Um, I, I think everyone was a little bit. I think he had a big part to play in it. I think everyone was a little bit jittery for whatever reason, which we, we can't do. We, we need to play with open hearts and open minds mm. and be confident and brave. And, you know, it's easy for me to say it, but you you've got to try and do it and uh, he's another one you know I always, I always sort of like look at Bournemouth when they first went up with my brother's team but I think they made a few signings Adam Smith as I, I didn't feature for the first season they were just sort of uh, grasping what we're trying to do um, I know that we might not have that sort of time but he's another one similar to Kai um, he's got a directness about him pace a quality but obviously we've we've got to do best for him and he's got to do best for us as well so just buying into what we're trying to do and and to get the best out of each other, really. Yeah, I mean, like, he looked bloody excellent for Hayward Heath. I mean, he, yeah, just get a bit of that. Oh, you know, it could be yeah. uh, fab, fabulous yeah. down the wing. Yeah, um, no, it's, it's um, yeah. So now we see it's, it's it's all sort of work in progress, Chris. And um, we, we, yeah, we see we just take it step by step. Yeah, just moving on to Alex Alex Brefo. Um, I mean, I'm a fan of his already. I mean, I. Oh, yeah, as I say, I, I, I'm no, I'm no expert, but like Alex has come in. I just think I love his mentality. Uh, I mean, I think he's an excellent signing. I mean, um, how long, how long you had you been monitoring him in terms of bringing him into the club? I, I remember watching Alex play for Cray Valley at, sorry, at our place against mm. Ben Pope, and I remember watching the game back. I was still playing then, so I was sort of analysing my own performance. But I thought, wow. This is a guy that would be the first defender I saw compete with Ben on a physical basis. Mm. And I just thought, hey, I could see him bringing the ball out from defence end, slapping balls into midfield. And I just thought I'd love to get hold of him one day to mm. just teach him like footwork, defensive uh, stuff, basically, like which yeah. I, that's my passion. He's only just turned 21. And I just reckon it could be a massive investment for the club. I know he in looks like of, a thirty-year. He, he plays like yeah. a thirty-year-old defender. Do you know what I mean? Like the, the yeah. exper- very experienced defender. Yeah, there's, there's little things which there's, there's still improvement there. There's still a little one percent, especially within our own box. There's certain situations which, if he gets that right, Chris, um, mm. he's heading things like that. But that's that's the stuff I love coaching, and uh, I just I just think um, I wouldn't be surprised if clubs come knocking sort of within the season with him because he's got all the attributes of a modern player that you need for to play central defence. So, um, yeah, watch his space. But another one, work in progress. we we'll take it step by step and keep our feet on the ground. But, yeah, he's a huge talent. Mm, yeah. And then, and obviously, it's just been announced uh, yesterday that Jake Elliott's coming back. I mean, yeah. you've obviously twisted his arm. I mean, how have you managed to persuade him to come back to the pilot field? Not that it needs too much persuasion, but he was playing, obviously, up the leads. Yeah. I've got a fantastic relationship with Jake. When I played with him, I feel like I, I helped him on the pitch. So I remember Jake the first three or four games and people were like, God, I'm not sure if he's up to the level yeah. of that. And, and uh, you know, thankfully, one thing I've got, I think is I'll never get on anyone's back. I'll try to give players confidence. I say I always lead it on the pitch, always sort of calm and sort of saying things nicely. When I had to get heated, he got heated. But, mm. you know, I think that's leadership. So uh, I think because of that, um, I, I tried to help him throughout his career sort of last few years and I think we've just got that general respect for one another and it, it's we, we've all seen Jake you know what he can do Excellent but the, the, the exciting thing for me is that you can um, you can get Tom Chalmers further up the pitch now um, which is uh, is another part of the plan really which I hope works because if you look at Tom Chalmers highlights he's he's become a fantastic right back there's no denying that he's heading like on diagonal situations uh, and driving out with the ball. But I think now where he's played behind attacking players like Nori, he's seen the movement that is needed. And mm. he looks like, for me, he's gone to another level this year. Regards, oh, he can, yeah, 100%. He can drop a shoulder. He's someone that can connect the game with Ben Pope. 
or those sort of types and and get us further up the pitch and uh, fulfil our attacks because at the moment it's, 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 it's obvious a little bit where we're just not quite making the best of our current situations when getting in the opposition's half so uh, it's one that I'm looking forward to seeing yeah develop. bloody hell and, mate uh, yeah yeah never know never know Terror, terrorise me I tell you when you're pushing him up I mean he has been uh, TC obviously uh, well particularly Folkestone game I, I just love it it just he's he just wants the ball you know, and he and he's, yeah. he's he's just like, yeah, come on, mate. And you could see it. He's like, yeah, come on, I'm getting past you. And it's it's just a joy yeah. to watch as a, as a fan, anyway. I mean, yeah, no, but they're having uh, it's you know they're having to double up on him at times. And mm. obviously, if you've got two players marking one, it creates space for other players as well. So um, I'm sure that it will will only benefit us bringing Jake Elliott back for for a number of reasons. Uh, will he be available for Saturday? Yes, he will. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. Nice so that's all good. Yeah, Excellent. yeah. I think we've spoke about this before in interviews and on roundtables. I mean, you've always been a very grounded individual, and then, you know we have spoke about that. This step up, uh, the major difference is that yeah, more than likely you're going to get punished more for that for that little mistake, that little switch off. Um, uh, we won't get away with it as much. Um, no. Equally, we've we've not had the best of luck in in terms of. I mean, we can. First, we part the Averley game. Yeah, you know, being brutally honest, I mean, you know, we, it was hor- horrible conditions to play football in um, for night. Well, for ninety-eight minutes or whatever it was, and yeah. unf- unfortunately, we switched off a little bit for their winning goal. Um, yeah. Since those games, you know, the Folkestone game in particular, you know, the Folkestone fans were coming up to me and and they were saying just how super drilled we were, how the, the the passing patterns that 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 they were really playing very well as a unit. That 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 mentality is it is it as as it was last year in terms of you've got this group the group is going to police itself. Yeah. Yes, I, I think it is, Chris. Because um, to be honest with you, I think if um, if the dressing room was slightly weak, we we could have gone under by six or seven against Hornchurch. Mm. Um, they had every excuse to take regards an early send off penalty. Uh, a 30 yard thunderbolt after 11 minutes you're 2 nil down you, to be honest you, you're standing there as a manager thinking oh, it's a body blow you, you're mm. unsure really where to go it's, it's crazy and what that team showed me in the second half especially was was nothing short of um, well, it, it, it was brilliant it, mm. made, it made me feel proud as a as a manager being on the touchline we to, to do that at Hornchurch, FA Trophy winners a couple of years back, that's nothing short of, you know, that's that's top six stuff for me. Uh, and that gives me a lot of confidence going forward. If we get the right personnel in the right areas, uh, and also, which you mentioned, the rub of the green at times, which I'm not, I'll always look at us first. What, what, why did we get into that situation? How could we defend it better, or higher up the pitch? So, obviously, there is, there's, there's things we need to improve. But I do feel now with the next block of five games, Let's let the dust settle. Let's see where we're at after them five, and yeah. then uh, we'll be able to gauge where to go. I think, I think with everything now, everything's so magnified with, with social media. Um, oh, sod like, social like, media, like, Gary. To, Jesus you know Christ. I mean? like, well, yeah. it's, it, and that's to, you know, and I'll be honest with you, it's great. It has to be done. It's a modern platform for clubs to advertise themselves, but that's why I'm not on it because yeah. I have to stick to what I believe in, what my staff believe in, and what my players believe in, and. Um, it ain't, it. it ain't grounded. It ain't grounded on social media. I'll tell you yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 and honestly, I, I wouldn't have a clue. I just, I've got to be my own man. And yeah. I just love it now that obviously you'll get played at the bottom of the league. Three games gone. And, and I love it. Three games gone. Of, yeah. Three games gone. Gone. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah well, I remember like when, remember back in the day with the, the football, you didn't even look at the table until 12, 13, 14 yeah. games. Remember, no one ever had yeah. looked. And yeah. because yeah. there's a million channels now, they're looking at the table after one or two games. It's like, yeah. come yeah. off it. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And, and we, we know it's only, we, I, I, I've got 100% confidence in that because of the way we train, the way we coach, that we're, we're only going to get better. And, um, yeah, it might take us five, six games just to see where we're at and, and to become grounded and know exactly what sort of way we've got to go with certain situations and that. But I'm, I'm, as I say, the, the, the team could have easily gone down at Hornchurch and we never, we stood up and we just counted. And uh, that, for me, makes me a very proud manager of my of my group of players I've got at the moment. Well, yeah, to, uh, as a sidebar, like I, I, I obviously I didn't get to the game, 
But when, yeah. I, when I saw what happened, um, old Smithy tweeting them out, tw- tweeting that we were yeah. two 0 down. There's other clubs that you could say right six seven nil, but I never expected us to be bagging uh, losing yeah. by six or seven. I mean, just I just yeah. the, the way that the, the teams drilled, and then when I saw the highlights of that second half, yeah, very impressive, very impressive. Yeah. You know, you, you yeah, did, just, did not yeah. give up, did not give up. No. And like, no. yeah, they got the late goal, but that was after tons of great play. And that's just the way it goes sometimes. But at least yep. you've got that thing where that no, these players did not give up and we we go on to the next no. game. No, exactly that. No, 100%. Yeah, so talking in the next game, playing Brighton in the C region and um, nearly got it. And yeah, yeah I mean, as as a team, I mean, what, what, what in terms of us fans, let's not talk about, uh, I mean, I obviously you... We're going to try and get a result from it, but in terms of them, what's their threats? No, I think it, I think a lot of teams within this division division are very similar. I think it's there's a directness about them, a mm. physicality, uh, and they're two things that in every game this season that we're going to have to face and and overcome. So, obviously, that old saying of earning the right to play that's going to be apparent in this next game. But I will say we'll win it. We we must win it. That's mm. that's, that's the attitude I've got to have. We need to kick start the season now. We need to get going. The great news of Jake Elliott signing that, and um, you know the easiest way to get a to get a rapture of, of applause around the football ground is to to run hard and work hard. And uh, you know I'll keep alluding to it with, with Man United last night. Um, if the effort's there, if everyone buys into it, then um, football become like a magical thing. And uh, that's that's my message to the players: work hard, run hard, listen to what me and John are trying to tell you, what Brownie's trying to tell you during training sessions, and let's um, let's go and do it, and um, let's get three points on the board and, and get our, our season kick started. No, brilliant going. And just so you know, I mean, I've been getting loads of messages from fans. All of them are saying that they're behind you. Do you know, like you know, yeah, we're no. just a little bit of the rubber the green. Yeah, we'd be getting results, but the, the efforts there, the work rate, the, the you know, you could see the, yeah. the the stuff that you're trying to do. You know, as I say, we will be behind you. We'll be cheering you on Saturday. Brilliant. No, I appreciate it, Chris. Top man. All right, Gary. Thank you very much. And I will see you at the game, fellow. Yeah. Different class. Thanks, Chris. Cheers, Cheers, Gary. Thank you, mate. Top man.